What is up, players? It is Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to a video showcasing my finished work for a War Master level commission. This is a Typhus model from Warhammer 40k, painted in the original Death Guard colors of the uh, 30k game and the Legion of Death Guard. So, for those of you who aren't uh, up on the fluff, this model, Typhus, as he's called in Warhammer 40k, is originally known as Callus Typhon, who was the first captain, I believe, of the Death Guard's Space Marine Legion. When the Death Guard fell to chaos and fell to evil, they got all mutated and stuff, and the Death Guard Legion, they worshipped Nurgle, the chaos god Nurgle, who was the god of, of disease and mutations and uh, really gross things like that. So, <laughs> when he came out of the warp and he was all mutated, he had a bunch of weird uh, growths and mutations that really emphasize Nurgle's uh, whole thing, which is just uh, toughness, endurance, and fortitude through, uh, through sickness and through mutation. So the client requested specifically that I stick to the old, the original Death Guard color scheme, and I think that's terrific because the Plague Marines and the new, uh, I guess, Nurgle, Death Guard colors is just a very pale green and maybe shaded with with a brown wash but uh, just very basic looking green so I think it's a much more interesting uh, path to choose to go with the Death Guard colors which were originally this off-white kind of ivory bone cream color and uh, the armor shoulder pads done in green with a uh, gold trim so, because this is the first captain, because this is a War Master level model, I really wanted to emphasize the armor and uh, my abilities as a painter to bring out the highlights and uh, and everything in the armor. So, uh, yeah, this is a terrific model. I believe that I have unboxed him on my video a few years ago now. The when you compare this to the Forge World Callus Typhon model that they've released, it just it's very interesting to see how the sculptors for that model have taken this as an inspiration because this was made you know back in the I don't even know if it was made in the 90s or in the early 2000s but when they released the Callus Typhon model a, a little while back they took a lot of this model and they kind of interpreted it in the Callus Typhon model for example the chainmail uh, hanging from his torso there is actually also on the Callus Typhon model, as well as kind of under the shoulders, kind of in the joints over there. They added some more chain mail. These kind of weird coral, they look like coral to me, growths coming out of his back of his suit in the Callus Typhon model are represented as two, I guess, breather tanks or oxygen tanks that have uh, these kind of pipes sticking out of it. So you can see that they've uh, really used this as a motivation. They didn't want to start from scratch with that model and uh, like, like the armor on his chest, that little grill is the same, the uh, helmet is uh, the same, they've used a lot of the same uh, cues from this model. So when I was painting this model I was thinking how can I really emphasize the, uh, use my skills, paint it at a War Master level which is my highest level of quality that I offer for my commission studio and how can I really bring out what I feel are the most interesting aspects of this model because the scythe you see it it's kind of going right across his torso there so um, the main focus is going to be drawn there a lot the the little coral outgrowths on his back otherwise he just looks like a big beefy terminator so I added lots of highlights, scratches, and nicks you can see to the, the blade of the scythe there. I did some weathered verdigris oxidized metal effects on the, the gold on the scythe as well as on the gold on the shoulder pads. And yeah, the color recipe is very very simple. I will be doing, fingers crossed if I can get my, my whole thing set up, I will be doing a full-on tutorial for each of the Legion and their pre-heresy colors. So I didn't want to uh, go too much into into what it took to make this guy, but if, if you'd like to copy this color scheme, you think it's interesting, and uh, I, don't, I don't know why you wouldn't. I think it's a really cool looking color scheme if you can get the weathering down right. Uh, the paints that I used were Games Workshop's Rackarth Flesh for the white armor and Castellan Green for the green. Shaded the white armor with watered down sepia 
And uh, Seraphim Sepia, if you add some Lamian Medium or some acrylic paint thinner, it will help you a lot because the wash is still a little bit too thick. The pigmentation is still a little bit too thick. But if you use some white spirits or some acrylic thinner, then you're able to really drag that Seraphim Sepia color around. If you take a look by the helmet, that's where I think I've done the best work with the Sepia wash to really naturally shade shade the armor and then you just bring bring it back up with Rakarth flesh and then I added a little bit of Vallejo's deck tan which is a beautiful beautiful ivory color but at the same time it's it's brighter than Rakarth flesh so you get some really good highlights now to do the chipping I didn't want to go overboard with the chipping but even on the Callus Typhon model they they chipped his armor a lot so what I tried to do was a very natural looking chipped effect so what I did was I painted on very randomly some splotches of, I, I believe I used Mechanicum Standard Gray mixed with Rhinox Hide and just a little bit of Abaddon Black. And I just painted that on the, mostly the edges. If you take a look on, of, on his uh, left gauntlet there. So focus. I uh, did a lot of it on the edges of the armor plates, like on the leg armor there. Obviously where the mutations are breaking through the armor, I, I added in some chipped effects there as well. But overall, I didn't want to do too many scratches because there's so many mutations, it's just scratches would really muddle up the, the look of the model. So I just kind of followed the mutations and scratched and chipped up the edges. Right on his, <laughs> I don't know what they're called, I call them butt plates. On his butt plates, you can really see that, that chipped effect. And then after that, I took some Rune Fang Steel and very, very carefully painted within those dark chips so that you get the look that the paint has been worn away to the bare ceramite and then even the ceramite has been chipped away so that it's just a very shiny bright metal coming through from underneath. I think it's a cool effect. You should try it if you haven't tried it yet. Um, the green was highlighted back up with Castellan Green after washing it with Seraphim Sepia. I washed everything on the model with Seraphim Sepia just to keep a consistent tone to it. And then I did the edges with Ogryn Camo, but you could also use Strachan Green or Nurgling Green. Just depends on how, how bright you want it to go. I wanted to keep the shoulder pads kind of in the same, in the same arena of color as the, as the white armor. So I decided to go with Ogryn Camo, but really it's, it's up to you. I decided to do the red the armor uh, wires within the armor. You can see three of them in red, just like the Games Workshop version. I used as a, as a painting guide the Callus Typhon page on Forge World as well as the Typhus page on Games Workshops because there are some areas of the model I couldn't tell what they were when when you just look at it. So uh, if if you're looking on this model straight on, those red wires in there could have been painted in like fleshy color like little tentacles or worms or something, but I decided to go with red. And I did see this when I was Google searching images of Typhus in his uh, original colors. Excuse me while I switch hands here. I saw this little nerdling painted there. It, usually nerdlings are painted in green or bone colored maybe, but I've never seen a nerdling painted in blue. So when I saw this, as I was researching uh, different different uh, techniques to pe painting this model, I saw this blue nurgling just sitting on his knee, and I thought that was so cool because it's a it's a little pop of color that otherwise he would really blend in. I mean, if you look at the model, and if I had painted him in nurgling green, he would really just blend in. That's why I don't really see him when you look at the typhus model that most people paint in that kind of muddy green color because he just kind of blends into the armor. But this way I could focus on painting and highlighting his teeth, a nice bone color. You can see his teeth popping out from his lips. You can see that horn sticking out of his head. And uh, definitely you could see the little flash of color of his tongue sticking out, going like Bleh. And I think that's, it's cute, it's adorable, I loved it, so I decided to paint it like that. Um, there might be, I asked the client if he'd like, and so I'm waiting to hear back from this, but if he'd like, I could also add in, you see how the, the bone is just breaking through the leg armor there. I was thinking another effect I could add would be a very subtle blood effect around the bone within the armor, because I'm trying to stick away from the mucus and all the green Nurgle's rot, because I don't want him to be too uh, nerglified. This is kind of pre his his full ascension into just pus and 
grossness, I guess you could call it. And that's why I also haven't painted Nurgle's Rot in his very, very worrisome looking torso armor where all of his guts are spilling out. But this is a terrific model, you guys. If you can get your hands on it, it's a great way to practice your weathering. I would take some of the things that, I, that I've done here and you could definitely do them uh, on a bigger scale with some Death Guard tanks and uh, artillery and it, it, was, it would just be a lot of fun. The gold on the shoulder pads are done very simply with Retributor armor and then, oh gosh, what was the other armor called? The, there are the two new golds from Games Workshop that they released with Age of Sigmar. The, oh, that was Retributor. Liberator gold for the base and then Retributor armor on top of that. The Verdigree effect was achieved. You know, Games Workshop has a Nihilac Oxide. I've used that before. It's okay. But for a really focused blue, this very vibrant blue, I went with Sotek green. And I used to do Hawk Turquoise, but uh, in lieu of that, Sotek green works really, really well. You just have to water it twice as much, water it down twice as much as you would a normal um, paint. Just add, keep adding water until it, it flows really, really watery. Otherwise, it's going to look too thick and it's going to look like you painted it on rather than it built up after years and years. So there's my model, you guys. I hope you liked it. The uh, coral bits were done with uh, Bugman's Glow, highlighted up with Cadian Flesh Tone, and then I believe Ungor Flesh shaded down with uh, Agrax Earthshade and Raikland Flesh Shade just to make it not look pink and fleshy but give it more of a kind of coral color. Beautiful model, again painted at, at a War Master standard. I hope you guys liked it. If you want to see more, you can check out my website. It has a bunch of pictures in my gallery as well as my Facebook and my Twitter where I have all my stuff. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.